Hey YouTube, back again with another uh, home project. It's one of these impromptu things that uh, happens when you've got uh, some older appliances in your house. Today's project is replacing the uh, furnace control board in the Goodman furnace, and we're down here in the crawl space because that's where our that's where our air handler is located. Uh, this is a Goodman uh, three-ton uh, AC. That's a gas uh, furnace. Actually, it's a heat pump with a second stage that's a gas furnace, so I guess a dual fuel system is what they would call it. The air handler, as you can see, is lying on its side. This is the return air duct, and over at the other end is the plenum that supplies the uh, trunk lines out to all the ducts. We started having this issue uh, where the uh, thermostat was calling for AC, the uh, air conditioner was running, blowing cold air into the house, the, uh, the uh, condenser unit outside was running, and at just random times the uh, blower here in the air handler would turn off and it would stay off for 60 seconds, sometimes it was 30 seconds, sometimes probably as much as 90 seconds, and then it would come back on and it would run for a while and then, and I want to say a while, five to ten minutes and it would shut off again and then it would start up again after a minute or minute and a half, whatever, and then it would start, you know, run for a while. And this would happen several times. It always happened in the hottest part of the afternoon uh, when the system was having to work the hardest to keep the house. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into this. So after, after showing my, my friend in the HVAC business uh, a video that I made, a cell phone video that I made of the, of the malfunction with the blinking LED, he said, well, what you've got is a failed board. A local supply house, of course, has the failed board for a replacement for the failed board. This is a generic replacement called the ICM280. Um, he said the local local supply house has it for a hundred bucks, and of course, I got online and found it for about seventy. I, I pulled so. the I pulled the breaker uh, at the breaker box for the compressor unit outside, just as a little extra precaution. Uh, here at the furnace, we've got the switch right up there that we just flip to the off position, and the uh, the unit uh, de-energizes. So I'm thinking probably the best way to attack this is going to be to take our pliers and just disconnect the uh, cables one by one, uh, and and cool. snap them into the appropriate connectors on the new board. And that way we don't mess up and connect something in the wrong place. How tight is it? Shouldn't be too hard. The paper says that we should disregard the included 9-pin connector. We're not going to need it uh, for replacing the B18099-13 HSI module. What we're going to do is locate the red, white, and green thermostat wires where they pass through the side of the furnace cabinet and remove and save the wire nuts and then disconnect that pigtail from the main thermostat wire assembly. So the red, white, and green wires, the way this guy's mounted, they are down here. And we're going to have to find where, where they go. Looks like we're going to have to cut a zip tie in order to accomplish that. So we'll go ahead and do that here. Then you'll have to put it back together if you cut it. Just another reminder while we're doing that. When you're working with some high voltage and some low voltage here, so be sure to turn the power off. If you don't have the switch right above your unit because it's that old, or because it's been wired around or something crazy like that, then go to your breaker panel or your fuse box and disconnect it there. The status LED here on the board should be off. If it is red, that's what color you're going to be after you get shocked. And all we need to do is disconnect the red, white, and green here in this cluster of wires. And so what we will do, so we're going to have to make some uh, mental notes here because we can see that red and yellow connect to the white wire. Red and yellow connect to the white wire. I will tell you that I've had a, I've had a, an HVAC 
person to uh, out here before who's told me that the wiring inside this unit is, his words were cobbled together. So, red, yellow, white. so the red and yellow wires here connect to the white wire here. The green wire, or good, this is an easy one, the green wire here connects to the green wire from the thermostat. So, red, yellow, white, green, green. Yes. So that one's a little bit easier to work with. Next, over here, and that's just beautiful right there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Taped it up. No wire nuts, just, just taped up. That's not, that's, 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 that's poor wiring right there. We're going to, what we'll do is we'll find us another wiring nut when we finish putting things back together so that that can be done right. And so the red wire connects to two white wires right here. Red wire to two white wires in this cluster of white, white. spliced wires. So that was the uh, green wire to the green wire, the white wire goes to this red and, and the red yellow, and, and the red one goes to the two white. And then a red and yellow went to a white earlier, I thought. That's right, the red and yellow to the white, and the two whites. What we're red. going to do is start disconnecting wires one by one from the old board and connecting them to the new board. First thing I'm going to do is just disconnect this big 9-pin connector because that one I don't have to keep up with how it connects. It, it only connects one way and we, we can't do probably a lot of these by hand and that's a better way to keep from damaging them. There we go. Okay, so that connects to FS. And so, of course the lugs on the new board have to, some of them have to be in slightly different locations. The, the FS terminal on the old board, right here adjacent to the 9-pin connector, it's in a slightly different location on the new board. That's okay. As long as we get the labeling right, we're good. Next up we have four neutrals, which are these four wires trying right. to keep ourselves out of the way of the 9-pin wiring harness. We're going to connect our four neutrals to the new board. So the next set of lugs is labeled uh, trans, primary trans, pri trans, primary trans, probably primary transistor or something like that. And we're going to disconnect those two from the old. Ah, okay, primary transformer, I'm sorry. Uh, that connects to the transformer down here, the black wire does, so that's that's where that's connecting. So that's going to be the uh, 24, 24 volt AC power supply right there. And we connected those back. And then next up, this connector called L2, which probably, that's our high voltage. That's the... Uh, yeah, that's 120 volt AC input on the on the board. So I slip it out so it's less tangled, like so. And then we'll slip it on. Okay, so we finished up the side of the board. It's matching up pretty closely though. We have this one called IND, which we're going to connect to IND on the the logic board. Let's connect this, which is called HSI. I happen to know that's hot surface ig uh, igniter. So is that right? Hot surface, hot surface ignition. And so this one, I, I can surmise that that one's going to go up through the uh, hole in the cabinet up here and connect over there to the uh, igniter lights the gas up when we run around run, run, run our heat. So this is H1. Yeah, I can hardly see you what you're doing. There. This is H1. I'm looking for the connector for H1. And the reason I'm not finding it is because I'm misreading it. It's M1, not H1. So that's going to be, uh, that's one of the leads that can connects right up here into the uh, blower. The one that blows out the heat? Right. This is this fan. This is a fan right here. That's what blows the air out into our ducts. So 
That's M1. Air conditioner work? Hmm? And it makes the air conditioner work? So it makes the air move. And then we've got this guy, which says heat. I'm going to connect right there to the heat connector on the new board. And just connect this, which says cool. So these are going to be the power uh, power supply cables for our uh, fan. So we've got everything moved over, except having the 9-pin connector connected, which I'm going to hold off on until we have it up mounted in its uh, spot here. And we also have to connect our thermostat wires, which we'll do in just a moment. So at this point, we just kind of cautiously remove the old board from the standoffs. You can see it actually fell off two of them. I will point out, though, that this board includes a spare set of nylon standoffs. So if you happen to damage any of the standoffs, you've got replacements. They come right, right along in the bag. Like Here's our old board. Hmm. It looks pretty old. Yes, it's probably original uh, to the unit. We have to now connect our thermostat wires, white, green, and red. I'm going to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and get the little pigtail right here. And we're going to connect these guys to the W, G, and R terminals on the new board because they're white, red, and green. My wife asked me, why are these called pigtails? I said, maybe because they're all curled up like a pig's tail. I don't know. What I do thought you think pigtails were in your hair. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's because they curl like how pigtails are out and then curl down. Let's go ahead and snap this onto its nylon holders. That was insanely easy. Here we are. Okay. Let's take our pigtails and pull these little bits of insulation off of them. Okay. And so now we come back down here with our wire nuts and we will connect everything up. Green goes to green. That one's the easy one to remember. Red wire connected to what? The red and yellow? Um, I think the red, was, the red and yellow were connected to the white. To the white. Red and yellow. That's right. And then the, the red was connected to the two whites. You yeah. have to go back and watch the tape just to make sure, but I think you're correct. There. Oh, we'll connect that. And so now, of course, is when we need our additional wire nut, which I'll have to run out to the shed and get. Okay, so had myself an extra orange small size wire nut to connect uh, to uh, find there easily in the shed. And so we'll on. Did you get wet? Just slightly. It's a little rainy, but it's dry here in the crawl space. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tuck the wires back behind here. So we're all reconnected here. We're going to reach up here and flip the switch on and see if the little red uh, indicator light on the board turns on. Caroline, bring the camera up close here for us to where you've got the, the light in, in your view. It's right down here. You may have to. Okay. There we go. Well, let's reach up here and turn our switch on. And see. Yep. We got a red light. Yay. Yay. So of course, now what we have to do is wait until the hottest part of the summer and make sure that, in fact, the air handler continues to run the way that it's supposed to and doesn't randomly shut off uh, while the thermostat's calling for air conditioning.